Hey, what's up, y'all? What is going on? This is your girl, Mickey J. Hello, hello. So, we're definitely going to get down to it and find out what this year, this astrological year, holds for you, beginning with the fiery, sensational, vibrant energy of Aries. Now, what you say? Now, what you say? Now, what you say? Now, what you say? Look at us, man, at the end of the astrological season, and we are here now into fiery me first airy season. And I say that with a lot of love. Oof, before I begin here, I want to let you guys know that I'm sorry I haven't been on as much or around. Um, I want you guys to understand that this craft right here, this read these readings, my advising, um, my poetry, um, everything that I do that's rooted in my artistry, my voiceovers, everything that I pour myself into has um, a theme. I hate when I run out of the words. It just has that theme and touch of authenticity to it. So please understand that this craft is to be treated with respect. This craft isn't something meaningless to me. This is something that carries a lot of weight that is very impactful to the lives of others and mine of my own. So do understand that when I'm not on or going live, whatever, that it's for a very, very specific reason. There are a lot of people that put a lot of faith into knowing the answers of um, their particular futures and universe and take that guidance seriously. And I don't want to fuck people up. I've seen it done with other readers, and it is just so totally disrespectful when they allow themselves to become so engulfed in their gift or, um, you know, just so over i guess just um over pouring with um the support and praise of other people that it becomes ego centered and then they start fucking people up and they start misleading them and that is very unethical to do of course in this practice and so with that being said um please understand when i'm only on so many times it appears that what i'm going to be doing is either tarot tuesdays or tarot thursdays um it'll probably only be um during the sun season and then the full moon. So when a season of um, the astrological calendar starts, so namely Aries season, and when we have a full moon, this one coming up is going to be the full moon in Libra. So it's only going to be two times this month until I'm led otherwise, okay? So ah, picking up from Pisces, um, not Pisces, uh, no, yeah, of course, Pisces season just ended and we just concluded the full moon in Virgo. My gosh, you guys, I have been busy, busy, busy. You guys have no idea, man. My ancestors be on the ball. Like I finally got all my shit cleaned up in here. Like my space is clear. Pisces and Virgo axis is all about clearing and cleansing and releasing and ultimately healing for me. I mean, we're definitely going to get to that relationship stuff because boy, a lot of messages and readings that I got, a lot of you guys suffered a lot, suffered a lot um, after Valentine's Day and during Pisces season. And it hit you guys a little harder than uh, you thought it was going to. And it, it hurts. I know. I know. We all go through setbacks. And romantic relationships seem to be the major focal point from which we experience the most suffering. And and it's it gets uh, tough. I mean, it doesn't get any easier. But I'm here to let you know that for every setback comes a comeback. And that's what Aries season is all about. Just getting that Ram energy, that fire energy going to say like, Hey, I can do this. I can beat this. I'm on the ball. I'm on the road. And so I do have a little uh, favoritism or preference for Aries. That's where my moon is. That's like my number one bitch. Sorry. <laughs> I can't help it. But Aries moon is where I procure most, you know, the majority of my energy, my strength, my enthusiasm, um, my aura. So Let's get started here. Um, the first thing that I want to bring up is I want to start you guys off with a poem. We're going to start doing that at the beginning of our seasons here. So we're just, I mean, we'll get into the astrological stuff. Well, I'm going to start you off with my art, which is what the channel is going to be about. Get you a poem here. We'll get into the advice column. We'll get into the wisdom, the readings, and then we close out. So this is all about airy season and getting things together. It combines the healing of Pisces season, um, the culmination, which that is the 12th sign of the Zodiac, which is, you know, encompasses all energies, you know, just putting yourself back together, healing and then starting over. Sorry if that was some noise there and just starting over with a renewed and more confident. 
Oh, and part oh, and part of my work with a uh, Pisces and Virgo season and clearing and releasing is now I am putting all my poems to memory, which is what has been um, due for some time. So work with me on this. You know, I'm still um, getting the kinks out, but uh, yeah, I think this turned out beautifully. This is in dedication to everybody who has been working hard, healing, doing the work, and you know, as we do the work, we find that sometimes these um, old flames come back to try to test us. So here we go. Mm. Ode to the old flame here to play the same old games he had in mind himself only, but now all his hoes is gone, so now he lonely. So now he's back with the same old tricks he used when he straight goes to me. The audacity of this motherfucker to show up so unexpectedly, unexpectedly, just like the last time he ditched me and expects me to be oh so welcoming. He must think I'm that type, but last time I checked, when you disappear, you stay gone. Dumbass didn't even do the magic trick right. When I'm in need, my messages he never reads. But once I've rid of him, out of sight, out of mind, finally focused elsewhere, forgotten him, left him behind, he pops up, expecting me to be accommodating on his time and thankful for his company. All, the, all to the old flame who taught me most of y'all are just the same. Who thinks I think he's changed while he thinks he has opportunity to get closer. I've used the opportunity to get closure. You see guys, for me, once a man is over, it's over. Never date the same man twice trying to repaint his true colors. I've learned that as I've gotten older. And sometimes some things are truly for a season. Because as the Cherokee man once told me, some flames should stay put out. It went out for a reason. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. I got through the poem. Man, this, this took a bit to memorize. And I just, I'm just so happy for myself because I didn't have to like go phone, phone, phone each, for each line. And I just hope that gave you guys some inspiration. And this story is about all of us. Just when we're really trying to put our all into a relationship, uh, friendships or romantic uh, like, and when that person doesn't reciprocate, it's hurtful. And then when we try to move on and heal from them, and then they show back up out of nowhere, it's fucking insulting. It is fucking insulting. I'm not going to lie. Like, ugh. I've had a couple of poems about dudes just popping up out of nowhere. Or even, I haven't dated women, so LGBTQ community, don't feel excluded. Just, you know, work with me on this. I'm explaining my experience, and I want you to resonate it, you know, related to your own. But, man, Unbelievable. I had another person come to me to advice, um, and this one, this one was pretty pivotal because uh, theirs was very reminiscent of a lot that I have been getting lately where they're feeling like, oh, I've done everything in this relationship. I've done this, 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 this. And the thing about relationships, you guys, is that this is not about overusing uh, Aryan energy, you know, to try to I guess, push things along because the fire goes out and then you've burned yourself out. Um, I mean, that's the biggest thing about Aryan energy. You do need to treat it with care because with Aryan energy, Aryans, wherever you have a sun, moon, north node, wherever it is in your natal chart, you can burn yourself the fuck out if you're not careful, especially when it comes to relationships. That's a place, I always say this, it's a place to give, not to take. Um, when it comes to, oh, okay, I've done everything in this relationship, yeah, yeah, this and the third. It's not about everything that you're doing. It's about what the other person is reciprocating. That's what Pisces uh, season uh, and that full moon in Virgo was trying to convey. We want you to clear out and release the things that are no longer serving you or at least overtaxing you. Because you can be giving your all, in, you know, giving it 100% in the relationship and everything. But remember, this is on a scale. That person has to be giving their part too. You can't go, okay, well, even though I'm at capacity here at 100, I'm going to go ahead and work overtime to compensate for yours. No, it's going to create an imbalance in your relationship. And then it's going to, excuse me, eventually cause resentment because A, if that person really is trying hard and you know, they're not getting up there for whatever reason, they're going to resent you because it's like, well, dang, you're doing it for me and not allow me to muscle my way in. You know, or that person might take advantage of you and then you're going to feel swallowed up and empty. And I guess what I'm trying to say here is that make sure that you give yourself the love and appreciation to yourself or recognition, whatever it is, to yourself first before you go seeking it out in other people. Because 
when you're at capacity here at 100, because the thing is, is that when you're at 100 here, you can't go any further. I know there's those little, you know, sayings about, oh yeah, you, I could go 110, this and the third. But if where you're at in your life only holds the capacity of 100, that's where you need to stay. That person needs to close the gap and catch up with you, not coming down and you trying to lift them up. Because again, it's no longer love, it's work. And who the, I know relationships do take a certain amount of effort, but when it becomes like a job, what the fuck? Why is that fun? Why is that fulfilling? Why, why does that add to the beauty of your relationship blossoming if you're treating each other like coworkers and t- daily tasks? I mean, then it just, it just gets awful. And I, what I wanted to add to that is if somebody is functioning at 100% and you're not, you know, and you're expecting them to do it all for you, you're going to be feeling bad and you're going to hurt that person because you're still not going to feel like it was enough because you didn't put your 100% in. So I just want to repeat that thing is give yourself the fill your cup before you try to ask for everybody else to fill it for you. Because if you're coming to all your relationships, I tell you this in every single episode, I don't care if it doesn't fit the season. If you're coming to everybody with empty cups, even if everybody is giving their absolute best to you, it is still not going to fill enough because you didn't meet them halfway and vice versa. If you're giving to somebody that is um, still catching up or whatever have you, it's still not going to feel like enough because they haven't had time to catch up again. 100 has to be here, 100 has to be here. Everybody has to be able to be at their full capacities in order for things to flow smoothly. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw for Aries season and give you guys a good idea of where your year is looking like, or at least Aries season. Some of you guys are busy on projects. I know I am. This channel about to be off the hook. I got too many social media platforms, so I'm going to try to manage them as much as I can. I just created my Twitch channel that will finally grow on March 29th. It's just kind of my way for me to stay in touch with friends and family and have a good time with, um, you know, the some of the enjoyments and highlights of my childhood, which was video games. I We used to be like just game fanatics. Not I'm not necessarily like, you know, the definition of what a gamer is to everybody, but I still nevertheless enjoy a good... <laughs> Good, a good source of entertainment. You know, it's um, when we're in times of uncertainty here, it, it could be something to go back uh, and enjoy some nostalgia a little bit. Um, sometimes the future can look a little daunting or, you know, the technology can get a little played out, whatever have you. Nostalgia could be a pretty exciting place to um, especially enjoy with um, the younger generation, too. I cannot wait to enjoy games with my uncle and, you know, uh, kick ass with my little brother. Um, he lives out um, of the state here and we don't get to see each other often. And, you know, he's the little brother of um, the father I reconnected back with on Ancestry. And um, yeah, well, wait, I didn't say that right. So he is the son of my father <laughs> I connected back with. You guys get the goddamn point. Anywho, so with that being said, um, I got the Twitch channel going and then like IG, Facebook, all kind of shit. So here's what I have for you. The Three of Pentacles. Octavia Butler. So I'm drawing from these cards, the um, our tarot, which is uh, depicting uh, feminine figures important in history because we're still in March, but still Women's History Month. So respect. <laughs> see if you can see that. Three of Pentacles, Octavia Butler. We have Three of Swords, Julian of Norwich. We're getting a lot of threes here. Looks like we got some collaborations going on or at least um, a three, four cult court there where you're relying on the spiritual realm, maybe. And then two of cups. Oh, there go those cups. Here we go. I told y'all. I fucking told y'all. Keeping them cups filled. Who is this? Lady Eleanor Butler and Sarah P- Ponsonsby. Hmm. It seems like we're going to be getting to work here. And it's so funny is that I keep getting my life path number. Um, whenever I see threes or twos, I know it's time for me to consult the spiritual realm to really, really get guidance on where I'm going in my path of um, just pursuing, pursuing my interests, pursuing my calling and helping others find the way as well. So, but I do know from the three of pentacles, usually I get this in some kind of work type context, um, get a third party to help you. <laughs> we have like the student, the teacher, um, working as a team, 
pretty much. In Aryan energy, um, I know that there's that stereotype of Aries being me first, but that's not necessarily the case. Aries is about leadership. It's about taking the lead. It's about taking life by the reins and really just um, stepping in, stepping into ownership of your power, what is going to work for you. Um, last season enabled us to release what was not working, um, allowed us to be gentle with ourselves about, hey, look, this uh, worked once upon a time, um, but it's time for us to take ownership of what may or may not have been our fault and to really, really just reel it all in so that we get a beautiful picture of the things we're trying to manifest. And three of swords. Oh, man, the heart breaks. The heart breaks, you guys. I know the last season was just not the best. You're left feeling uncertain and maybe a bit uh, not worthy anymore and unmotivated to pursue um, your you know, late, your latest or your past pursuits. But spirit is here to tell you that take heart. The pain will end soon. We're going to, we're going to have something else, something better come along for you so that we can go ahead and uh, nourish and um, fill you so that your heart doesn't feel so empty. But you have to be willing to accept this, you guys. I mean, if you have your cup out ready, then they have something to pour into. If you're just sitting there, oh no, the cup's empty. I can't use it anymore. What the fuck am I pouring to? I'm just wasting it. No. <laughs> I believe that's how spirit may work sometimes. Like, hey, look, man, I got I got some more for you, but I need the cup. I just need you to believe. And the place where you can start with, as far as if you're feeling a little down, is caring for yourself. You need to go ahead and take some breaks or some time for a while. If that's not possible because of work obligations or whatever you have in your life, you start feeling it... Um, Start inserting it into parts of your day where you can have some silence, whether you're in the shower or whether you have, you're doing your hair. Just moments of silence where you can really get some time to think. Whether you're in traffic, that's, oh man, that's a perfect opportunity, especially if you're by yourself. Just take that time, turn that radio off and just, just put off the emotions and the stress for a little bit and just, you know, listen to, just listen to the sounds around you for a little bit. I know traffic can be stressful, but just... What I'm trying to convey to you is to find pockets in your day to give yourself that, uh, that self-silence because silence can be self-care as well. I'm going to leave you with a quote from Audre Lorde um, that encompasses this because Aries season two is about getting the fire under yourself and getting that charged up energy because it works with water too. Like fire and water is kind of like an alchemy. And so what she says here is caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. So you guys, I need for you guys to um, start taking charge of your lives. Take back ownership of what has been seized from you as a result of being involved in a relationship with somebody or a uh, situation or otherwise. And trust in the divine, the energy of a divine plan. That's all I have for you guys tonight. You guys take care.